Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are back to Distro Wars, and we are going to do a, another comparison. We're looking at two Debian distributions, both running XFCE, and we're going to look at pros and cons. Of course, as you can see from the title right below me here, that we are looking at MX Linux and Sparky Linux. Two excellent distributions, and frankly, putting them side by side, I'm not sure I can declare a good winner for these. They're both excellent distributions. So let's go ahead and dive on in and have a look at their websites. So MX Linux, um, this project here is um, uh, Run with the Dolphin, is I believe the user you'll see floating around. He might pop in here on the comments if you're watching this live. And um, he is the one behind um, MX Linux, and he's done an excellent job. With MX Linux, we have a, it's definitely more Debian, definitely more targeted, more towards the new user, which is an excellent thing to have because we definitely need more people uh, using Linux. Sparky Linux specifically advertises we're not for a new user. What I'm going to look at, though, is once everything is all set up and installed, we're going to compare and contrast those. I will tell you, hands down, MX Linux has the easiest installer. It has the fewer options, and overall it gets you a really good product that is easy to manage without having to drop into a terminal. Sparky Linux, once you have it installed, you generally don't need to drop into a terminal either. They've done an amazing job with some of those tools and things that they give us. So you can head on over to MX Linux, which is mxlinux.org. You can download MX Linux over here. You can see the current release is 19.1. We have 32-bit. We have 64-bit. We have some advanced hardware stuff as well. And then you can just come on over down to the mirrors or to the torrent files, and you can very easily grab whichever file you want. Once you have the ISO image, uh, you boot it up, and it should boot up for you just fine. And there's an option right inside there to install it. And then the installer goes through, and it's it's definitely a different, a unique installer. It has some unique twists to it in there. You can set a lot of your settings and your options on the install. Very easy GUI. And uh, with that, you can choose your date formats for your time. You can choose your users, user accounts. One of the major advantages I like over MX Linux that is, is odd that Sparky uh, kind of irritates me with its GUI installer is MX Linux does not limit you to your password. If you just want to test it with a simple short password, no problem, MX Linux. Sparky, if you're installing with the GUI, it yells at you and simply will not let you use a what they deem a weak password. And to me, that's a little bit of a frustrating thing because what if I'm spinning this up on a virtual machine on an already encrypted computer? Uh, you know... So that is um, up to you. Obviously, you don't want to use weak passwords on a distribution computer, but hey, I like that MX Linux gives us that option. All right. Now, if you head on over to the Sparky website, you can read more information about it. They do tell you here, if you read through the documentation, it's not specifically for the new Linux user. But if you've been using Linux for a while and you're like, I kind of like the Debian branch, I'd like to try and learn a little bit more, Sparky might be a good place to go to because easily once you have it installed, they have the Aptus application, which will allow you to install multiple desktop environments on top of what you already have. Full uh, system management, all from simple GUI tools. Very nice options there. Um, you can come on over to the download, and you have the option of a stable and a semi-rolling release. I think MX might have that as well. All right, so over here, you can head on over, and we have our uh, 32 and our 64. So they're both offering both, uh, both types of download, which is good and obvious because it's based on Debian. Then we have LXQT, XFCE, we have the minimal GUI, we have the minimal CLI, and we have an ARM build. Um, so with this, you can come in here and kind of choose which you want to basic start with. What I'm actually using here is I already had the minimal GUI installed and I wanted to use my weak password without having to change it after install. So I just went ahead and used the minimal GUI and just installed XFCE as if I were downloading the XFCE package. Now, if you download either this XFCE or the LXQT, you will have a GUI installer. And so the installation is going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit easier to use and then you can get started and run with it. So uh, with all that we're going to go ahead and take the time now to boot up our first one of these distros and we're going to have a look at MX Linux.
So here we are on the MX Linux desktop right after our installation. We're greeted with this welcome screen here where we have a variety of different system tools and FAQs. So we have our basic tweaks over here. Let's just have a look at which of these guys are. So anytime you make an adjustment, it's going to save a copy of your current system. So in case you mess something up, you can always go back and restore it. Then this is going to launch a, uh, a tool here where we can go in, we can change our themes, move everything around and uh, do any other things that we would like to do as far as tweaking our panels and, and things like that. All right, so right now it's displayed on the left. We can go ahead and um, move that to the right. Uh, we can do top, we can do bottom. I might have to hit apply. Let's go ahead and apply so you can see top and bottom and we'll return it back to how it is. So this is kind of the way that they that they like it. All right, you also have the option here to install your codecs. So anytime you're running with Debian, Debian generally will not install codecs to it uh, for um, uh, licensing reasons. So MX Linux does give us a very nice simple button, enter your, click it, enter your password, and you will now have all your codecs installed. And hey, you are now good to go. Uh, we also have a, Let's close that down. We also have a popular apps tool here. So this will load up a very simple, easy to use format on any popular applications that you might want installed. Now, one of the things that uh, you will want to know if you are going to be using a Debian based system is looking at Firefox. Now, Firefox on Debian ships as the Firefox ESR, which is basically an LTS version of Firefox, so it's going to be a little bit older. Now, this system here, MX Linux, actually ships with your standard current rolling Firefox. So, if you do need the absolute latest on the browsers, hands down, you're going to want to go with MX Linux because the version of Firefox it is on Sparky is always the ESR. On this, we can choose to install it, but you can also see that MX Linux in its repos has so many other things that other people might want. Waterfox, Pale Moon, Google Chrome, Brave. Um, I'm not sure why I would want Google Chrome, really. Ah, ha, ha, I know, I know. All right, so anyway, uh, but these are things that not every Linux distribution gives you as an option out of the box, and it's really nice that we have the ability. We have a few other desktop environments, so you're not limited to just XFCE. You can do Mate, L um, LXDE, KDE5, a GNOME base, or a budgie desktop. So there's a couple desktop environments you can easily install from here. There's Docs, other software as well. Okay, we also have, um, let me just go ahead and point out the other thing that MX has a little bit differently is they have their MX tools, which is going to be very uh, similar to the Aptus application that we're going to see inside of Sparky Linux. So over here, uh, if I got to find it, of course, so here's your MX tools. Now we have a variety of other MX ones as well. This is the tweaks that we saw earlier. Uh, let's just go ahead and have a look at the tweaks. So same thing you, said, you had here. You can uh, adjust your themes, compositors, things like that. But we also have the MX Tools. This is a massive list of extra really good tools that's going to help you along and uh, do anything. So if you're running NVIDIA, hey, simple click button, install your uh, NVIDIA drivers. I do not think Sparky has the easy install NVIDIA drivers. Here's your codex. If you missed it on your front screen, we can repair the boot options. We can make a USB. We can take a snapshot of the system. There's just so many things here. Um, here's the welcome screen that we saw when we started. Here's Conky. That's uh, the your system resource guy over here. And there's just so many other little things that you can do that ordinarily you would have to drop into the terminal command. Uh, to do. So very nice tools inside of here. Of course, everything else is going to be mostly what you're going to find, except we do also have an ad blocker. So the ad blocker is going to work by uh, adding a variety of things. I clicked the wrong, wrong button there. It's going to add a variety of things to your hosts file. So you can come in here and select any of these that you want, and it's going to make the adjustment to your host file, which is going to block ads system-wide across your computer. Very nice option inside of here. That I believe is another tool that Sparky does not have out of the box. As far as applications installed by default, these are all default applications. We have just kind of our, our basic things that you would expect from an XFCE desktop. Um, 
we have our file manager. Is that the ba basic default file manager we have? Let me double check. Okay, didn't think so. I thought that might be Thunar. All right, so a variety of different tools. Here's your basic games. Graphics, they are giving us GIMP. We have LibreDraw, basic scanning utilities, couple scanning utilities there. Thunderbird, Transmission, Firefox, uh, Clementine, very good. XFC, uh, excuse me, wow, <laughs> VLC. Wow, hey, I had a, it was an alphabet soup of some form, right? So we do have a lot of things. Uh, some people might even look at this and say, well, maybe there's even a little bit too much, uh, a little bit of overlap like Clementine, VLC, although Clementine is music, VLC is music and video and things. So I guess maybe not. Here's your uh, MX tools just in a giant list. Office Suite, we have the full Office Suite. We have a PDF Arranger as well. A few extra tools inside of this that, that make it a, a very nice system. So overall, though, MX Linux, it is easier to use of the two. It's easier to install of the two generally. And it does give us a very nice XFCE, um, nice modern. And let's go ahead and look at our... Um, I want to look at a couple things here first. First, let's see what... Uh, Kernel we're running 419. That's probably going to be the same on Sparky. And HTOP, we should have done that earlier, but hey, better late than never, right? So 507 megabytes is what we are running here. So there's MX Linux. We'll go ahead and shut this guy down, and then we'll come back and uh, have a look at Sparky Linux next. And here we have landed on the Sparky desktop. So one of the things about Sparky is it does make the various desktop environments look nice, albeit for the size, the scaling is, everything is really small. And so you're gonna wanna come in here and bump up the scaling, which is something you can actually do fairly easy. Now, we don't have the, uh, we don't actually have the uh, welcome screen like we had, but what we do have if you are using Sparky is you want to find the Aptus application. This guy here is going to be your um, amazing super super duper do absolutely everything on your system that MX can do and, and even more. So the downside is you still do have to know quite a bit more about your system than you did on MX, where MX is definitely more of just a point and click. Now, there are things here where you can just kind of say, okay, what would you like to install? So if you want Clementine, um, you can just go ahead and, uh, and do that. Just double click it, and it's going to say, hey, should I install this package? And then you can hit the install button. So we'll just remember that I'm installing Clementine. That's not with it. See, it boots up a terminal here. I do have to manually come in and press my Y button for yes. But basically all these are going to do is it's little scripts that's going to boot up a terminal and run the command to install it. So in other words, it's not going to be quite as user friendly, but it definitely gets you uh, an interesting way to manage your system. Now, there are other tools and things like that. So you can actually refresh the package list. You can remove non-free packages. If you're like, you've suddenly had a, had a brainwave that you now want to avoid anything and everything dealing with proprietary software, boom, kill it all, kill it all. Uh, that's something that you're not gonna get uh, over on uh, MX Linux for sure. You can install packages from repository, install a dead package from a local disk, allows you to basically search for the file. Um, this guy here, you have to know the name of the package. There's a simple upgrade system over here. There's safely upgrade the system and then removing some other things. Codex, whereas uh, there was a single button for Codex over here, you can actually choose the individual codecs you want. Now, MX Linux installs all of these. This one here, if you want to do just certain ones, you can install just certain ones. Nice application for a little bit more control over your system. I've already looked at some of these um, various applications, uh, video players, audio players, video tools, audio tools, just so many really nice, uh, really nice options and features inside of here. Now, when you get down to desktop environments, if you are wanting to experiment easily on Debian with a variety of desktop environments, this is definitely going to be your one to go go with. We have everything from from new things like Pantheon and Budgie, all the way down to holy crap, is that common desktop environment? That's right, that is the predecessor to KDE. So you have so many different things: GNOME Shell, GNOME Flashback, Fluxbox, Enlightenment, Lumina, LXDE, 
I mean, yeah, they got a lot here. We got our cinnamons. Uh, is anything here really missing? Um, not that I can recall off the top of my head. But there's just so many options that we have inside of here. Very easy to install. So that is Aptus. Very nice tool for managing all of the different things that you might need to do. Oh, look at this. SnapD. If you want to uh, set up SnapD, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Here's your flatback support. No problem there. So all that kind of stuff is available. We'll go ahead and let Clementine do its thing and have a look at the other software that it makes available to us. So we'll see here that uh, there's not nearly as many uh, tools inside of uh, this one here. So a little bit more streamlined, more of a minimal build. We do have the option to install Firefox ESR or not. So I went with installing it because why not? Although you can go into Aptis and choose a variety of browsers. In fact, we should go ahead and do that again uh, when we're done with this. Media, we just have Pulse Audio um, uh, volume control. Nothing else inside of Office. So very streamlined system, uh, very minimal. And really that's kind of their goal is to make sure everything is as minimal as, as possible so that uh, you get a chance to, to see um, uh, build the system that you want to build. Let's see. There's Web. We have Chromium, Conqueror. We have Brave, Elinks, Epiphany, Opera, Google Chrome, Google Earth, latest Firefox, Firefox ESR. I mean, yeah, there's just, it's, this even has more. Hey, we got Tor Browser, SeaMonkey, Vivaldi, Otter. I mean, I've never heard of some of these. So we do actually have more options. So overall, it does look like M, uh, Sparky is going to give us a lot more options than will my uh, MX Linux. It's just going to be a little bit harder to use, a little bit harder to set up, a little bit harder to manage. Uh, we didn't actually look at themes over in... Um, over in uh, MX Linux. They pretty much have the MX Linux. This one here, we do have uh, a light and we have a dark. We have a variety of other ones in here that are just kind of your basic XFCE, no big deal. But you can actually go through and, uh, and kind of choose between more of a light theme and a dark themed system there. All right, so that is Sparky Linux. Overall, I think Sparky Linux is a, is a very good system. Again, it's not for the basic user, uh, the brand new user. So if you're new to Linux, you probably definitely want to steer more towards MX Linux. If you're ready to learn a little bit more and you want to stay on a Debian branch, you want to experiment with desktops, you want to learn just a little bit more about the terminal, get yourself comfortable with it, Sparky Linux is probably the way to go. As far as ease of insta uh, installation, MX Linux is probably a little bit easier to install in that the installer is a little bit nicer, you have a better configured system right out of the box, although you don't have a variety of desktops to choose from on the install. Whereas Sparky, we have a couple, and then we can actually use the command line installer to start with any desktop that we want. Again, a little bit more, uh, more involved. But overall, I think that Sparky probably has a few edges up over MX Linux, and it has a more minimal system and a more customizable system out of the box, whereas MX Linux gives you a good platform that you need for a new basic starting user. Sparky is going to be harder to use, so if you're not familiar with Linux and you're just starting out, again, definitely go with MX Linux. But they're both excellent operating systems. They have excellent tools to help out, and uh, I just can't figure out you know, uh, anything that would knock one of them completely out of the running. They're both great desktops, uh, great distros, I should say. So thanks for coming along here. Let me know all of your thoughts on these in the comments down below.